Estudiante, silencio, por favor. Okay. So let me go over the warm up. Okay. Attention, por favor. Okay. Okay. On the warm up, we look at chapter 14. And we went over the two very small objectives. And the two objectives is how to relate force, distance, and potential energy. And the uh, other objective is how to solve multi-step problem. So now, let me go over the homework, which many of you have attempted, and you will now have a second chance to do a better job to get an improved score. Okay, we start with the first homework. Do you have your hand out? Do you have this homework? Yeah. All right. Now, step number one is to make a list of no and unknown. So you go here under this table, and then for the no, you enter those values. There are two numbers. So now, enter these numbers, this one, 5, 6, and in the first cell, enter the second number, including the unit on the second cells. Go ahead and do so in your warm up. Okay. So, in your warm up, you have two numbers. Now that we have entered them, you can identify what they are. To find out what they are, you go to the example on the book, we will tell you what they represent. <laughs> so, to find out the details, go to the example in the book, find out the numbers in it. Oh! 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 Ladies and gentlemen, I'm now going straight to the right up. Five, four. Any further violation will be solved in the right up. Three, two. I'm now on the right up page. And what I will do is that I will skip on the warning from now on for the next 15 minutes. For the next 15 minutes, any violation will result in an immediate write up. I have the write up page in front of me. I will now log in. And then for the next 15 minutes, any violation 
will result in an immediate write-up without warning, starting now. I'm in. I have the page up and running. So be patient with me for the next 15 minutes so I can finish this so we can move on. We start with the first column, which are the no variables. In the no, what you do is you copy that these numbers under the no. So every time you see a homework problem and you see your numbers, be sure to copy down the number and the unit. Once you have copied out the number and the unit, the next step is to identify what they represent. I can still hear noise coming over there on that table. So, when you see the numbers, you write them down. Now, to find out what they represent, go to the textbooks. In this case, it's on page 377. If you go to your textbooks, you will find out what they represent. In this case, if it's an ant, it represents forks. So, what you do is you go back to your examples. And you know that when it says a letter ant, that represents the forks. So that's equal to F. And what is that? That's the force of gravity. When you see that Newton over a meter, in the example, that represents K right here. So you go back to your example and you say the second node is K. That's your value for K. I'm hearing noise. So now you have two nodes in your column. Your next step is to identify the unknown. For the unknown, look at the question mark. How much is each spring compressed? So in this case, if you're not sure, once again, go to the example. In the example, they also show you a similar scenarios. And then from that, you can determine that the unknown is X. The amount of compression for each spring. And then the second unknown is potential energy. And it's right here in your questions. So now that you have the list of no, and you have the list of unknown. So I will now check, make sure you have this list of no's and unknown on your handout. <coughs> so put out the force and the constant K as the no, and then the X and the potential energy as the unknown. I have 10 more minutes. So let's not try to, let's stay focused so we can move on to the next item. I'm hearing noise again. So now that you have your list of no's and unknowns, you're almost done. What you do next is to read the question carefully. It said right here that it has two springs. Not one spring, but two springs. So what you have to do is that on the next step, when you apply the equations, if, if the force of gravity is 560 amp, then when you apply the equation here, do you use the entire 560 for both springs or do you use half of it for each spring? Half. half. So what you do is that you say, okay, this is the entire force of the persons. And because I'm working at one string at a, one spring at a time, so you say per spring is equal to half that number. That's the key thing. So when you calculate the x, you use only half of that number. Remember now, the person is sitting on both springs, and the person has a force of 560N. So if you want to determine the force per spring, you take half of that number, and that gives you F per spring. So now you can use the equation F equal to KX. With this equation, F equal to KX, 
because you are looking for x. So you want to isolate x. So what you can do is you can divide k on both sides. Therefore, x equal to f divided by k. This is homework, the first problem. This is homework 24. This is homework 24, and you're looking at the first problem, homework 24, and you should see by now that we are trying to identify the value of x. Okay. So now, 10 more minutes, patient now, 10 more minutes. So now we know that we take half of the value and then we divide it by k and do we know the value for k? It's right here. So that's how we calculate the compression. A person is sitting on two springs so we take half of that force and then we divide it by the constant and that will give us the compression on each of those springs. And that's it. Once you're done with the application of the equation, you isolate the unknown, then you can plug in the numbers, but you're not done yet. Now, I will scroll down, but you can still see this, so don't worry, it's still on the page. So, when you finally plug in the numbers, the value for the compression, what is the unit when you compress something a distance? What is the unit for distance? Is it kilogram? Is it second? Is it meter? Meter. So when you finish with the answers, check on the unit to make sure that it's correspond with what you're looking for. In this case, should be in terms of distance, meter or centimeter. And now, for those who take one further step, they will get the full 100% credit. And this is the final step. If you look at these numbers, how many significant digits are there in this one? one. 560 has how many significant digits? Three. Three. If you look at the constants, how many significant digits in the constant? K. Two. Two. So your answer should have how many significant digits? Five. Your answer should have two. Your answer should match up with the least amount of significant digits. So if F has three significant digits and K has two, then which one should your answer have? Two. Your answer should match with the least amount of significant digit in your calculation. So if anyone able to route off the result to two significant digit, they get the perfect 10. And that is how we do our homework. We start with the list of known and unknown, we move on to the equation, we isolate the unknown, we check the unit, and then we check for the significant digit. And this is how you can get a perfect score in both homework and in the exam. So now we have two more minutes left. What we do now next is that you can check on a unit for x. If you're not sure, go to your textbook, find out what they use in the textbook and see whether your answers would match up with the one in the textbooks. And now x of ticket, complete these two columns. Do you know how to relate forks f to the distance, f equal to kx, to the potential energy? P equal to 1 half kx squared. Do you know how to solve a physics problem using multiple steps? Identify the known and the unknown. Isolate the unknown. Apply the numbers. Check the result. Once you're done with the exit ticket, show me the exit ticket and the result in your handout. And then you can proceed with lab 14. With lab 14, I have the material. You can go ahead and get a laptop and complete lab 14. As a reminder, you have three things coming up. You have the science fair, which is due on Friday. You have the homework and the lab, which is due after spring break. And I will, I will tell you more about the lab and the homework. For the science fair, the science fair, what you do is have to collect the data. Okay. If you're not here on Friday, then you can just submit it online. So now, please return to your chair. I will come by, take a look, and then... Yes, I can check whether you're ready to go for the laptop.